Hi, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. Today's webinar is the five C's to building and sustaining a skincare business in an unprecedented time. This webinar is brought to you by the Aesthetics International Association and Dermascope Magazine, and it is sponsored by Novita Spa Clinical Products. My name is Melissa Lawrence. I'm sure most of you know me by now. I'm the events coordinator for both AIA and Dermascope, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. The five C's to building and sustaining a skincare business in an unprecedented time is presented by Megan DiMartino. Megan is a lifelong creator of beauty, beginning her career in the fashion beauty industry during the, late, uh, during the early 70s in New York City. For the last 25 years, Megan has been one of the pioneers in result-oriented medical-grade skincare. She has built two skincare lines, Glycolique and Novita Spa Clinical Products. This webinar is interactive, um, so be sure to submit your questions for Megan to answer during the Q&A portion. Um, if you wouldn't mind, just take a minute to find that Q&A window and say good morning or good afternoon to Megan, depending on where you're from, and just let us know where you're tuning in from today. Um, and then, um, yeah, so we're going to do a presentation, and then the last 10 minutes will be a Q&A, so be sure to submit your questions throughout the presentation, because we will get to those at the end. Um, and without further ado, Megan, I'm going to go ahead and turn everything over to you. Well, thank you so much, Melissa. It is my joy and pleasure to be here this morning with everyone. Uh, we are here in the boutique of the Novitas Spa and Medical Rejuvenation Clinic in Georgetown, Texas, which is about 20 miles north of Austin. So this New York girl has been in the deep in the heart of Texas since 1987, when I moved here to work with Alcon Laboratories. But my journey and story starts long before that. It really starts in New York City. I grew up outside of New York in, on Long Island, and my dad was a uh, lover of Manhattan and the adventure of New York City, and this was in the 50s. And so, so many weekends we would spend in the city just going from north to south, east to west, and experiencing every borough and every taste and, and dynamic of New York City. It was part of my creative DNA. My mother was a very creative gal in her own right. She uh, sewed and created, and we created together many, many things. My father, give you a little background, was a pioneer in the wholesale beauty industry. And I say wholesale because he created and really invented tissue end papers. Now, if you've ever had a perm, you've had that end wrapped in tissue. Many of you might be stylists. And, and next time you open that uh, a perm a box of tissues, just think of my dad, Ray DiMartino. My grandfather, Albert DiMartino, was a barber but his story began in Italy and he was an immigrant and came to the United States at 16 and was uh, living in New York City and got a job at a very upscale um, hotel right there on Madison's, uh, by where Madison Square Garden is. And he became what they call a tin cup boy. And so he was in training to be a barber. He was very charismatic and loved people and certainly loved ladies and was doing the Ziegfeld girls, their hair. So he had a real creativeness for styling. And so in the early 40s, um, he moved his family out to Long Island and started a barber shop, but also a salon. So he was ahead of his time, creating a multifaceted uh, beauty dynamic. My father and his brothers were working in this salon spa, salon uh, barbershop, and helping their dad. And my father observed his father doing perming. Well, back in the day, they used cloth to uh, roll the perm. And with those kind of supersonic um, head uh, electronic heaters that came down over the uh, perm rods. Um, and so my father observed that. Years and years later, my father um, got a job with a large paper company, like a Kimberly Clark, that type of company. Um, and one of the products he was selling to salons, excuse me, to hospitals was wet strength tissue. And so he said to himself, I bet this would work for perming. So he cut the tissue up and brought it to salons. Now this is in the early fifties and the salon who was still, a net, well, they were using mesh, which was a non-woven material and they would actually rinse it out and reuse it. So he then introduced them to disposable perm tissue. 
So us children were packing end papers in our basement in Freeport, Long Island. And that was the beginning of my beauty and uh, entrepreneurial career. So my story is long. It goes into um, just being exposed to creativeness and thinking outside the box, inside the box, around the box. Now, I never said to myself that I was going to develop uh, two skincare lines. That really was not on my heart's radar. But what I did know that I wanted to create, I was always redecorating my bedroom and changing things up in my mother's home and uh, putting on plays and doing creative things in the neighborhood with all the kids. But I never thought of that, but I did know that I wanted to create something. Because again, all I had to do is go into Manhattan and that spark of creativeness was just totally generated again and again and again. So I went to high school in the 60s and I graduated in 1968. And it was a very difficult time as it is today in the United States, very polarized, um, world that at that time. And I went to a Catholic girls high school on Long Island. And I graduated and went to college in uh, DC, Marymount in DC for Arlington, Virginia. And I was majoring in fashion merchandising because by that point I was designing clothing with my mother. Uh, she and I would go in uh, to the pattern books and get a bodice from this a book and a, a waist from that book and a, a back from another book and we would piece together and I, I realized that I wanted to design. That was what I thought I was going to do. So I went to Marymount in Arlington, Virginia and um, but, but the program itself was fine but the surrounding situation was not. As I said, it was a very polarizing time and I, I was not comfortable in it. I had to work in the field uh, during that uh, summer as an um, intern, got a job in Lord & Taylor in Manhattan and worked in designer sportswear. This is 1969 now. And um, I worked for Mrs. Letty Peppard, who was the buyer for country clothes. And I just loved her and I loved it. And she said, why don't you stay with me and work with me and go to FIT at night? So that was my plan. And then just a, uh, a pivot, a course change, and that uh, I'll go into further in this webinar later, but basically um, I made a decision that altered my life and I married because I, I really had lost my North Star or my North Star was really not very secure. And that changed the whole dynamic of my course, of my vision for myself to be a designer. Uh, but I never, ever stopped. I never stopped that clarity of designing and creating. And so over years, I uh, went to Stanford, uh, Connecticut, Bloomingdale's, and uh, was offered a job with a line called Biba from Carnaby Street, London, and they were bringing it in. And it was such an exciting, interesting time. Now, this is the 70s, bell bottoms, big hair. And they said, well, with your background, why don't you uh, work with us? We're bringing this in, and it was going to be outside the junior department. So it was the beginning of that marketing, where it was not just on the com cosmetic floor, but it was a, you know, a specialized marketing program. So I was trained by the Biba company in makeup artistry. And one day while I was working there, I just, this clarity came over me and said, someday I'm going to create something like this. Now I didn't say cosmetics, I didn't say skincare. I just said, someday I'm going to create something like this. So that journey of creating in our beauty industry began that day. I remember Don McLean with American Pie was playing. I really do remember that. And I said, someday I'm going to create this. And then I continued on and I had a, um, a two children by this point and um, I needed a car. And I, the, after the second child, I could not go back to Bloomingdale's because uh, my husband at the time was in a carpool. It just created difficulty to get there. And, I, and so my dream of that was being altered. And I said, you know, I, so I was playing tennis. 
just to keep sane and uh, take the playpen down to the tennis court. And uh, as I said, I had two little girls by this point. And I then basically uh, just was observing this group uh, at a Tupperware party. Didn't even know really what Tupperware was, but I asked the gal that was doing the party, conducting the party, what did she make doing that? And she said, well, I'll have my manager call you. The manager called me and she went through her little flip chart, came to the page where it said managers like I, uh, who uh, have a Ford LTD station wagon uh, that is in your driveway. I said, go back and tell me how you do that. She looked at me like, well, okay. And I said, no, really, I'm not interested necessarily in selling plastic bowls, but I am interested in that car. She went back to that page and said, you know, you become, a, uh, you start um, conducting parties, you um, then recruit six people and you become a manager. I said, six people? I said, I'll do this. And within six months, my first, my unit called the Megaphones was born. Here I'm 26 years of age, and I realized during that season that what one of my purposes in life is, is to train and to build and help people actualize their dreams. Because yes, I actualized my car. Yes, I was making an income, but I was also putting this unit together with people that had their own needs and own dreams and own desires. And I really realized that during that time, that that was one of my purposes in, in my life. It was to help people, encourage people to actualize their dreams, goals, and desires. So I'm in Connecticut at this point, and, um, but it, uh, that was from 1976 to 1980. I was a Tupperware manager for the megaphones with my unit. But I realized I needed to change my life. Uh, that my marriage was not um, uh, sound and it was not a, a good environment for my family. And so I divorced. And then I did several things in sales, but at selling advertising space in New York City. But then I realized that was not a very sound structure for my children because I was commuting to Manhattan from Connecticut. So I went to work for my family's business, uh, the end paper king, my father, Ray DiMartino. And he wanted to add some products to the beauty division because during this, uh, from the 50s through now, he had developed dental and medical laboratory products. And I then uh, joined them because he, as I said, he wanted to add products to the beauty division. So it was a wonderful experience. I was able to do um, research and development, product development, marketing, taking it to market, and then education and training. So it was a one-stop training experience for me. But paper was not my life. Remember what I said back in 1973, someday I'm going to create something like this. Now, my product that I created for W.R. Race and Company was the original tail, nail towel for the industry called the table towel. And that's a whole other story. But I was creating and I was taking to market and I was learning sales and marketing through this venue or through this company structure. But then in 1986, I was offered a job with Alcon Laboratories in Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, Texas. Here I have two young gals. They're growing up, yes. My older gal, they're five years apart, was um, about to finish high school. My younger gal was in, in almost into middle school. And I felt that if I was going to make a change, this was the time to do it. So I interviewed for the job, was offered the job, and moved to Fort Worth, Texas. My older daughter stayed in New York, and I uh, moved with my, or she came with me, my 11 year old daughter and moved to Fort Worth, Texas. And they, uh, Alcon had acquired this small lab of um, uh, NDC coated, very serious uh, hair products such as Rogaine and Nioxin and that type of product. And they wanted to repackage and reposition the line. So I was working with them on that. When I interviewed though for the job, Remember what I said <clears throat> back in 1973, I wanted to create something like this. So when I interviewed for that job, I shared with them that I'd like to create a skincare line, a cosmetic line. They said, sure, 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 no problem, that would be great. But then as time went on, 
uh, I was developing a line for them called Haliron. Now, interesting point. This is a, an interesting fact for you guys. Today, hyaluronic acid is the tour de force of skincare ingredients. Absolutely fabulous ingredient, don't misunderstand. But it's been around a long time. And Alcon is a manufacturer ostensibly for products for the ophthalmologist and the dermatologist. So doctors have, or surgeons have been using hyaluronic acid to keep the eye moist during surgery for years. Very large molecule, molecule, as you know, holds a thousand times its weight in water. So um, fast forward, we'll go into today. But at that time, we created a hairline called Haluron. And I then did a whole storyboard for my boss about skincare, a, a brand based on hyaluronic acid, a, a connection with the hyaluronic hairline. And he said to me, get this, guys. This is a 19... 90, 89, 90. He said to me, skincare doesn't sell. Ta-da! I said, oh my gosh, I can't stay here. Now, I had a daughter in college. I was not about to bolt out of there and quit my job that day. But I said to myself, I cannot stay here. This is not where I'm going to stay. I didn't really know because I didn't say I had to have my own company. I had to create my own company. I wanted to create. That was my clarity. My clarity was creating. I'm a creative, so are you. So during that season at my job, having a paycheck, paying for college and my children's lives, I then uh, started speaking to the head chemist, asking him about different ingredients, ingredients that I was reading about because Alcon is a publicly traded company and I had the privy to get information about what was going on in the cosmetic arena. And I read about glycolic acid. And I said, hmm, because in, this is now 1991. And I read in 1991 that in the spring of 1992, Avon was going to launch a glycolic acid product called Anu. Well, my marketing brain said, man, this glycolic acid must be something. So I went to my chemist buddy and said, tell me about this glycolic acid. And he's talking about alpha chains and beta chains. And I said, no, 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 talk to me. And he said, well, you know, he was talking about uh, overacceleration of skin cells and eczema and psoriasis. Because remember, he's a chemist for pharmaceutical serious skin challenges. And, and so uh, I you know, I said, well, where would I get more information about this? Now, remember, this is 1991. There's no Google. There's no internet. He said, well, I don't know. I guess the library. I mean, honestly, that's what he said to me. And so I then set out to look for a company that possibly was working in, I'm talking about a manufacturing company that was working in glycolic acid. And so basically my conviction started there to grow and to build, to say, no, I'm not going to stay here. I made that, you know, definitive of purpose. Everything begins with an idea, everything, everything. Think back to your own life. Think back to what you do. Think back to how you said to yourself, I'm going to get my aesthetic license. Think back to the story of the why did you do that? the why of it. It all begins with that idea and it then your definitiveness of purpose comes in there someplace. Like I said about Tupperware, I knew that it was about helping people but uh, build their own dreams, goals, and desires. But basically that was not at that time, the focus and the forerunner of it. It was that clarity, the clarity of creating. But then that conviction, when that gentleman said, oh, skincare doesn't sell, I'm smack dab in the middle of the baby boomer generation. I know what I'm interested in. I'm interested in holding on to what I have and who I am and always improving. So my conviction was to create something that would add to that. When this gentleman, the head chemist shared with me about exfoliation, now he didn't go in depth of it, but he talked about psoriasis and eczema disease-ish conditions. And so I then started studying it and started reading about exfoliation.
And it made perfect sense to me because it just, um, now remember, I guess I didn't say this yet, but I'm not an esthetician. I have not had that training yet, but it was just really studying the skin and the need of the skin and from that exfoliation position. So I then set out to find a lab that was doing R&D and working in exfoliation, in glycolic acid. And I found a lab somewhere in the latter 1991, early 92, that was just beginning to manufacture in glycolic acid. I, that, and, and luckily for me, it was in the area. So I was able to interface with them without getting on a plane and going to them. And so I was, or FedExing samples and things like that. And so I was able to work with them closely and I put my first brand glycolique together. Glycolique was a pioneer in glycolic acid alpha hydroxy skincare. I launched Glycolique in the summer of 1992 and sold it through wholesale beauty distributors for years and years and years, 17 to be exact. Why did I do that? Because at that time there was no internet. There was no other structure of market other than wholesale and retail, brick and mortar. Retail was not anything. There was no Sephora. There was no Ulta. There was no internet. It was retail and it was meaning the department store and or it was wholesale. So I entered that arena because also that's the arena that I knew. The arena that um, I worked with, with my family's business, working with uh, the cosmetologist helping them get into nail structure. I interfaced with OPI and Creative Nail and other nail companies that were burgeoning back in the 80s. So I learned, again, education and support during that season. When I say learned, remember Tupperware, helping people actualize their dreams, goals, and desires. But then I introduced this table towel, this non-woven material, to these uh, companies and they actually uh, put it in their line. Uh, W.R. Rayson private labeled it for them. And so back to Glycolique, I then put a program together of simple, safe, and synergistic. And why did I do that? Because at that time in 1991, skincare lines, and there were very few that were sold to salons, and and basically none other than um, Matrix had a little skincare line, Redken had a little skincare line, but basically the lines that were sold into the spa, if you want to call it that, like uh, Elizabeth Arden and Georgette Klinger and companies like that, they were large European oriented line, not lines, not simple, safe and synergistic, not result oriented. They were just a more emollient oriented and uh, fragrance oriented and experiential oriented. That, so Glycolique, when I introduced it as a three-step system, as this little kit shows you, that was revolutionary. Just that, just that in itself. As I went, I went to that lab and sat down with them. I said, I want one skew, one, uh, uh, one product, so to speak, because we were selling skincare to the salon. Now, remember what that, uh, my boss said at Alcon. He said, skincare doesn't sell. What he really was saying there, guys, is that these long lines didn't sell. They were too long. The hair distributor <clears throat> uh, salesperson, who primarily was a man, couldn't sell it. They didn't understand it. They didn't use it. So how could they sell it? So I had been working with my family's business, interfacing with these reps, uh, the distributor reps, as well as uh, with Alcon, with the hair care line, and with, again, the same reps going into salons. I listened to them. I listened to what they were saying to the salon. I listened to how they were marketing it. Uh, the companies were marketing it their products. And so I uh, really emulated that and said, it needs to be simple. It needs to be result oriented and, and it needs to um, hand in glove with a result oriented that it needs to be balanced and not set up any negativity to the skin. So simple, safe and synergistic. So hence 
the, uh, the three-step system was born. And I launched that, as I said, in the summer of 1992, and then rolled it out to distributors throughout the United States. And then in 1997, I re-engineered a glycolique and broadened the line to Novita Spa Clinicals. Novita means new birth, new life, always something new. One of the reasons I uh, re-engineered glycolique is that I wanted to broaden the line a tad, and I wanted to continue with that result orientation, but not just hang my hat just on glycolic acid. So Novita, new birth, new life, always something new, that's my promise. And so basically in 1997, uh, launch this new and improved, so to speak, to the distributors throughout the United States. And then in 2013, I'm jumping over a little bit here, but in 2013, I re-engineered the whole line and it is a clean line, paraben free, laurel sulfate free, fragrance free, it's always been that, but basically creating this line where you understand and the consumer understands that this is a clean line, but it's always been simple, it's always been safe, it's always been synergistic. And what does synergistic mean to me? It means that it works together synergistically. We have accessory products, if you look at that image, there's more than just the three-step system, but these products are for all skin types. We say anyone from eight to 108 who has skin, I keep looking over at myself, um, talking to you um, and not the camera, it is a synergistic system. For, it's a three-step system, AM, PM concept that is for all skin types. So what's fabulously easy for you is that the accessory products all work back to the system. So for instance, we have a product called Clear Skin. Clear Skin is 2% benzyl peroxide and tea tree oil. I've never used per personally Clear Skin, but, but, if I had acne, I would use the system, but then use clear skin as an accessory. So basically it all works together synergistically. So I want to take a second here and talk about courage. I want to talk about courage from the standpoint of you, of you. I'm not special. Let me make this really clear. I'm a little girl that had a dream, had goals, had desires. Goals, maybe not at that time, but dreams certainly, and a desire burning in my heart to create, to create for you, to create, to make a difference in life. I grew up on Long Island. I was, my creative DNA was established. Fertilizer was New York City. But then I don't have to repeat my journey, but basically, I had the courage to step out and leave that comfort zone and, and continue on in my journey. But again, I was one little girl that had one year of college and then got married and had two little girls and kept going on. I was a single parent all of my life, really, uh, even when the person was living in the house. And I'm sure many of you have had that same situation, but I knew I had to take that step. I had to evolve. I had to evolve from that. And in 1980, I made that change. That was not easy with two little girls, but I knew I had to do it. I took that first step and the second, third, fourth, 25th, 99th was revealed to me, but you have to take that first step. So I moved back to Long Island. Now my family's business is way out on the Eastern end of Long Island and Long Island is long. And so, but it gave me the opportunity to learn, to grow, because you, it, you can't go from um, point A to X without having the experience. You can't. But my experience, like most everyone in the world, is life experience. So I left New York. I went to Fort Worth, Texas. Very different world. But I worked for a company that, um, uh, tremendous learning experience, tremendous. Now. I could have stayed there, I could have. I could have stopped there, but I didn't. When that gentleman said, no, that's not what we're going to do. I didn't say, okay, I'm out of here as I shared earlier. I just started undercurrent, learning, 
more, growing more, and then evolving more. And then I went and launched Glycolique. And Glycolique, from that, from that standpoint, now there's so many pieces of the story in between. How did I finance it? How did I build it? How did I, but as I say to this, the five C's is clarity. You must have clarity. You must have conviction. I had conviction of that dream, that goal, and then that purpose, the purpose of helping people, helping people grow. And when I started Glycolique, what really became very apparent to me was that not only was I helping let's say the distributor and the distributor salesperson. But then I started interfacing with salons. And uh, during the day, 91-ish on, probably to 95, six, there are very few estheticians in the United States. Most states did not have separate licensing at that time, very much like the nail industry in the 80s. So a person who had a cosmetology could do nails and skincare. It wasn't until the mid 90s when it started that quantum energy was building and the state started saying it's time to add that license to their programs, did separate aesthetic licensing happen? But what I was doing was helping salons get into skincare. To me, the definition of spa is a special pampering attitude. It's a helping people from the moment they call to say they would like to set up an appointment to the moment they leave. Because when I first started Glycolique, there weren't any spas to speak of. There were salons getting into skincare. Then as time went on, helping people to evolve into that. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to evolve personally from Glycolique to Novitas Spa Clinicals. Because it was a broader line, not a heavy big line, but a broader line that fit in strategically with products that enhanced the system. So I then, as I said, I started the Novitas Spa Clinical Products in 1997. In, um, so now you see here Georgetown, Texas. Georgetown, Texas is, um, is basically a bedroom community of, I'm just looking at the time here just to keep kind of in it. Okay, 11.32. Georgetown, Texas is about three, mi three miles, three hours from Fort Worth South. And I, in 19, um, excuse me, 2003, I said it's time to do a training center, a spa, a, an education training center, and a spa. It's kind of the field trip flagship. And I started looking for an existing business in Fort Worth, Texas. My warehouse was there. My manufacturing was there. My home was there. The warehouse was large enough to redesign uh, it a tad and have an education facility in it. But God had a different plan. And that summer of, nine, uh, keep saying 19, 2003, I was in the Georgetown, Texas area because my daughter Jill, remember she was 11, well, she grew up and she had moved to the Austin area. And um, she was down here and um, she was looking to buy a home. And she asked me to come and look at this house that she saw. And so I hopped in my car and drove down <clears throat> to the Round Rock, Georgetown area. And I'm gonna have to take a little sip of water here. And um, so we looked at the home and then she said to me, you know, they, this uh, town has a darling little square I know you would love it because we had lived in Connecticut for many years, as I shared earlier. And so she said, she knows what I like. And she said, let's go to uh, the square. So we came down here on the historic Georgetown Square, uh, courthouse in the middle, right? I'm looking at it right now. And I, it was like, you know, God just stopped me and said, pay attention. And so I did. And with that, I... Uh, started studying Georgetown, Texas, because the spa that I was looking at, or the salon, I should say, that I was going to remodel, um, it just didn't come together. So with that, I started looking and studying Georgetown, Texas, the demographics, the geographics, the proximity to Austin, Texas, and um, 
you know, it's an interesting town. As I said, it's 20 miles south of, excuse me, north of Austin, but it's right on uh, Interstate 35. There's an age-restricted community here, Sun City. At the time, 7,000 homes. Now it's 11,000. It's a university town. Uh, Southwestern University is here. So there's a lot of dynamic, but also the um, Chamber of Commerce president at the time told me that the state was building, money had already been appropriated for a tollway that started in San Antonio and was ending in Georgetown. And it was going to have a, a circle around this area. Well, I knew that their plan was that Georgetown would become a bedroom community of Austin. At that time, guys, it wasn't. Someone said to me, who is still a client, who's an esthetician in Austin, um, who I've been training for years, Damon Howes, he said to me, George Patch, meaning he knew this girl from New York City moving to Georgetown, Texas, but God knew the plans. And so I evolved again. And in 2004, I took a one room studio. Oh, by the way, I got my aesthetic license in the early 90s when I was pivoting from my job to launching Glycolique. 250 hours, no instructor, all done on DVD tapes. Just remember that for a second. So anyhow, George Patch, but God had a plan. And so I evolved one more time and took that courageous, you know, streak in my, from my grandfather, DiMartino, to my dad, these pioneers, and moved myself to Georgetown, Texas. And I took a one room, uh, a room in a hair salon here, not knowing one soul, and started the Novitas Spa at Rachel and Company, starting that marketing of that. And then in 2005, came up to the square and launched the Novitas Spa on the square. And then in 2013, added the medical component to this business and uh, changed the name of the business to Novitas Spa and Medical Rejuvenation Clinic. And so I've been evolving and evolving and evolving since I was a little girl, since that dream, that goal, that desire. And so it is part of me, it's part of my DNA, but it's also part of you because you're a, you personally, are a creative person and you have those same dreams, goals, and desires. And so I took that confidence from building all of this, all of what you're seeing here from step by step by step. Now there's other pieces of this story that then will go into my book uh, that, that I wrote and, and published in December of 2019 and went on Amazon. It's on Amazon right now as we speak. You can purchase it on Kindle. Um, but it went to number one on January 4th, 2020. That actually is my mom's birthday. I didn't realize it at the time when it hit, but it went to number one uh, in three business categories in 2004, January 4th, uh, 2020, January 4th. But the reason I wrote this book is not to boast. It's not to be anything of that nature. But during the season of living in Georgetown, I'll just share this very briefly, I married Paul Matthew Tyler. I had not been married in 30 years, had no desire to be married ever. And as I say in New York, ever. But God had a different plan. And I saw his plan very clearly. Paul was a special, special man. That's all I'm gonna say at this moment. But basically speaking, he healed my heart and he then had a stroke in nine. And um, it, uh, as the neurologist said, it was like throwing gasoline on a condition called Lewy body syndrome, which is a Parkinson's form of dementia. And he passed in <clears throat> September of 2011. So after Paul passed, um, I then went back into the spa. I had not left, but meaning focused on it and then worked towards building the medical component. But the other reason I mentioned this about Paul is that that morning after he passed during the middle of the night, uh, I just heard in my spirit again, just like, you know, go, go, go. It was share my story. Share my story, I asked. In my head, in my 
heart? Well, God doesn't answer those types of questions. But I, you know, I asked my life story, tonight's story, meaning Paul passing, what story? But over those years from 2011, I started uh, basically journaling and just thinking through how would I share my story? What story would I share and how would it help you? How would it help you in your journey? Because again, I'm no different than anybody else. I just have not stopped. I took that first step and I've left many pieces out and the next book is being worked on and it is the five C's and it will be these stories in the middle of this. But share my story. So as I was journaling and writing and thinking in 2017, again, voice said, get off 7th Street. We're on 7th Street, by the way, on the historic Georgetown Square. And what does that really mean? But from 2009, when Paul had a, a stroke to, uh, through his passing and then re um, cleaning up and then launching the medical component, a lot of work, a lot of work, don't misunderstand. But I was joyful. It was, it was what I wanted to do and needed to do. But it was time to get off 7th Street and get back out into the marketplace and start networking. And so in September, September, in July of 2017, I went to Think and Grow Rich for Women, put on by Sharon Lecter and a group of women um, powerhouses in uh, Austin, Texas. Many of them I knew before, uh, Paul Stroke and um, pulling back in. And I went back out and started networking again and recognized that it was time to sit down and, and put this together. I had written an outline in the summer of 2017, right before I went to Think and Grow Rich for Women by Sharon Lecter, right before. And I wrote this outline and then I kind of put it away. And then in 2019, I started working on a program that is going to be available to you shortly. And it's called the Master's Program, the Postgraduate Master's Program. And this is going to be a uh, online course that is for you with all of this structure, all of the structure of how I have built these businesses, but specifically this spa business. And um, I'll go into that in a minute. But I went back and started networking, started then uh, with that, I hired a, a coach to really think through and break these things down into small manageable parts. And I started working on the postgraduate master's program that has been in my heart for many, many years. Now, this business, Novitas Bad Medical Rejuvenation Clinic, is celebrating on July 5th, its 15th anniversary. And I started working on this master's program. And then again, that inner voice said, you haven't done what I said, finish your story. Share your story, not finish it, share your story. So I stopped and I said to my uh, gal that I was working with, I think we're gonna switch gears here. I know we're gonna switch gears here. And we just, I, had, I, gave, I sent the outline to her and we just cleaned it up. And that is hope and possibilities just over the horizon. It's never too early or too late to create the life of your dreams. Never, 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 never. I'm about to have my 70th birthday, August, and I am just beginning this next phase. And this book is the foundation of that. And then this past January, February, I could have done this many, many times before, but I submitted uh, or put in a submission, I should say, for Austin Women's Magazine, a Women's Way Awards. You know, I just was that inner voice again saying, it's time. I kept hearing that, it's time. I'm not one to want to boast and put out there. I'm here to help you. But, but it's time, it's time. And so I submitted an application for the Austin Women Magazine's Women's Way Award. And lo and behold, hundreds of applications, Novitas Spa and Medical Rejuvenation Clinic is a finalist in the category of product innovation. 
But what's interesting is that the finalist is Novitas Spa and Medical Rejuvenation Clinic. And I called them when it was announced that this was the category. And I asked the young lady that was um, han handling this for Austin Women Magazine. I, and she said, well, it's the hybrid. That's what I call this, guys. It's a hybrid because it looks like, you see behind me, this is the boutique, as I shared. The magic happens behind that Tuscan wall. Novitas, I said, is an Italian word. It means new birth, new life, always something new. She said, it's the hybrid. That's the product innovation, which is, you know what a hybrid is? Hybrid car, hybrids. Looks like a car, smells like, you know, but it has a battery. It's, it's a car though. This is a luxury day spa clinical skincare, medical, and wellness. And the products are the centrifugal force that holds it all together. Because what we do, and you uh, work with this every day, is results. Because the consumer is looking for an experience, yes. They're looking for results and they're looking for value. And you tie that together with this hybrid. Clinical, medical, wellness, tying it together. I say wellness because we have an infrared sauna and we also do regenerative stem cell therapy as well as regenerative stem cell therapy, facial facelifts and the like. Go into that with the postgraduate master's course. But this is a hybrid and that is what was nominated. That was the finalist for this Woman's Way Award. So it is so exciting to me with but I had to, you know, I'm going to use the word confidence because I had to feel strongly about this to submit that application, that this was a very unique thing. I knew, I really had no expectation of being a finalist. I just knew because I had that inner voice saying, it's time, it's time. So with that, it's time. I submitted that. And then the pandemic happens. The pandemic happens. It's affected us all in this uncertain, crazy time. And basically, uh, I was forced to close this business. Now, I've had a lot of personal tsunamis and, and pandemics, but they were my own. Not forced by the world to close my doors and lock my doors and say to my staff, we have to close. And so on March 21st, Saturday, March 21st, was our last day in business, not knowing what was going to really happen. But I said to myself, I'm never going to not be here. I'm going to get dressed and come down here every day. And guess what? We sold $1,000 less than in March in products. Wow. Now, March, yes, we lost a week and a half, almost two weeks. But no one was here. Curbside, shipping around the United States. I was the shipper because we had inventory here. Went to FedEx. But basically, I never went dark. I stayed here. And one day, one day, um, a gentleman knocked on the door. I was here. I had just finished a podcast. And he asked me, are you interested in selling me your business? Wow. Okay. I had not put a for sale sign up or out and so forth. I was just plugging away. And this person uh, basically had already purchased um, a business that had two locations in the Austin area and was recognized that he needed ad, to add medical, but he also didn't want just a medical spa. He recognized that it needed, he didn't know this, but that hybrid concept, he had studied what was in the marketplace. He found my business. Uh, we're an award-winning uh, spa, number one spa in Georgetown for almost 10 years, so it's not hard to find us. And uh, he started then asking people questions about my business and myself, and he approached me. So two weeks ago, I sold this business, but I have a consulting agreement with Rich Ryan to help him put in place the hybrid concept in all of these businesses. He now has four. He, uh, the two original, then Novitas Spa, Medical Rejuvenation Clinic, and he purchased a Woodhouse Spa actually in Austin, Texas in Westlake, which is a very lovely area. And so it is my job to impart all of this, including the regenerative stem cell, the Novitas Spa clinical products, train the staffs and build this hybrid business for his businesses. 
So it is that, and I say, I end this with compassion. I end this with compassion. Not only compassion, we all know this as estheticians and a business owner. It's about a serving heart. And I end with this picture of my staff. This is my heart. This is my heart that I have helped these women uh, with the exception of Rich Ryan, who's not a woman, and Carla Runner, who's next to me. Um, she was a guest that night of the Women's Way Awards, which was last Wednesday night, which we had here. It's a long story. Uh, the magazine had to pivot and not do it at JW Mar Marriott downtown Austin, but do it remotely. So we had it here um, remotely and we had some guests, but bottom line, it was for Hey, Megan. No, here less than six years. Was, hey, Megan. Yes, Melissa. I'm sorry for the technical difficulty. There was a, a glitch there, so I wasn't able to hear you. You weren't moving. I don't know what happened there. Can you repeat whatever it is you just said? I'm sorry. Sure, 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 sure. Melissa? Okay, so uh, Melissa said there was a little glitch, and I don't know where the glitch started, but what I was bringing up was compassion. But it's compassion and I say compassion because it's very clear that as estheticians and spa owners and business owners, we have to have compassion for our staff, for our clients, for what we do. Value is based on how you make people feel. So it is that compassion. But I use that word also, compassion for yourself. Give yourself a break. This is not an easy time. It's not an easy time for anyone but just know that you are on the track for success. You began, you're building, you're sustaining to success. Don't stop, begin, build, and then sustain this dream, this goal. But what I was saying is that these women, uh, with, and that is Rich Ryan, the gentleman that bought Novita Spa and Medical Rejuvenation Clinic, and Carla Runner next to me is a, a very good friend of mine that I've known for years. She has a spa in Little Rock, Arkansas. She's known as the Lash Queen. We met years and years and years ago at a hair show. It's a long story, but I invited her to join me because we have um, had such synergy of career together. But my heart is these ladies. I have poured into these ladies to grow their own lives, grow their businesses, to be able to sustain their businesses within a business. Um, that is the um, genesis of the postgraduate master's program. Everyone in this business, Bridget and Taylor is the lead spot coordinator, but Melissa, Sarah and Gigi have been recipients of the postgraduate master's program. And I would like to bring this program to you. This program <clears throat> and the six C is I'm a consultant. So here I started from a dream, goal, building. It is about that conviction, it's about that courage, it's about that confidence, and it's a compassion for yourself. I've made so many mistakes. The biggest mistake I made is I didn't have a coach, that other C. I didn't have a coach through all of this. And I want to help you work through and build those five Cs and be your uh, coach, your consultant for you. And I would love for you to book a discovery call uh, to work to a no charge discovery call with me so that we can build together. Go to my website, megandemartino.com and just put your name and information in and let's do a discovery call. And then from there, we're gonna start doing Zoom calls and uh, group calls. I have so many different ideas, but the bottom, bottom line is to uh, put your name and information in. Also, uh, then we will contact you, but also at megandimartino.com, there is a link to the Novitas Spa website. And you can go there. It'll be a great field trip to you to see that hybrid program. And so just go to novitasspa.com. There's also a shopping cart on it. Now that is for retail, but we absolutely sell all of those products uh, for spa, 
cost and you can contact us and we will get back to you about that as well and send you information. I'd love to help you build your business with Novitas Spa Clinical Products, but as important as that, it is about helping you be successful. So I hope that this story of clarity, conviction, courage, confidence, and compassion helped you on some level open your mind because whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe in his heart, he can achieve. And I'm here for you today and every day to help you do that. So let's do some questions, kids. Awesome. Thank you so much, Megan. Yes, we will jump right in. Um, and I would like to say you are an absolute inspiration. Um, while I was familiar with some of your store, story prior to this webinar, um, I personally cannot imagine moving across country by myself with two young kids. I've got four kids myself, so I could not even imagine, even with just two of them, that absolutely takes confidence and courage above all else. Thank you. Yes. I look back on it, Melissa, and I say, were you actually crazy? You know, uh, but, <laughs> but <gonna> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. But thank yeah. you. I appreciate that because it is, um, but you know, I'm, I'm going to say this too. Everyone has their um, evolving, pivoting, um, you know, moments. But again, if, if you think back to your life, and I'm talking to you too, Melissa, if you think back to your life and you didn't make that decision to do that, how different your life would be and how you would have missed out on all of the things that God had in store for you. So it really is that listening to that voice. And if something is insurmountable, then obviously you're not supposed to do it. But when things fall into place, then you know that God has a plan. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He does. And while we don't know it, there is a plan. Amen. Um, okay. So, um, one lady wants to know, she says, do you have online classes now? Um, and do you think that it would be acceptable or accessible to someone that's in Nigeria? Say the last sentence, accessible. And um, she was just, she's just letting us know she's in Nigeria. So she was just Nigeria. wanting to know if you have an online Nigeria. class. Yeah. Excellent. Nigeria, I have a very warm spot in my heart for Nigeria. I went to uh, England uh, 2010, New Year's, and um, was... Uh, with a group from Nigeria and it uh, was wonderful. But anyway, uh, with that said, we will have the postgraduate master's program online course ready within a couple of months, max a couple of months. But I encourage you, my dear, to go to novitaspa.com, put your name, email, information in, and we will be back to you. And we can do a, a 30 minute no charge um, discovery call. And, and put a plan together if that works for you. But that postgraduate uh, master's program will be in place with, I, do, I will, would like to say in a month, but I'm not going to say that. I would say within two months, but certainly by the holidays, absolutely. Awesome. Um, I actually just got a comment. Somebody was online trying to book a consult right now. Um, uh, Milagros Olivos. Um, so Elizabeth, if you might, um, I'll give you her info here shortly. That way you can follow up with her. She's having some technical difficulties, it looks like. Um, okay, so I've got another question for you. Uh, what type of treatment would you recommend for clients whose skin has been damaged by harsh bleaching creams? Well, first off, the skin is an organ and um, it's the largest organ of the body. And so harsh bleaching creams basically is saying that it's, not only irritating the skin potentially, but also uh, hypo and hyperpigmentation and, and creating other negative side effects. So on some level, some level, you have to ascertain, um, you know, where they are, but also um, start over again, you know, rebuilding the skin and, and you know, helping the skin balance because the operative word in life is balance. And, and so exfoliation is vital. But bleaching is, you know, um, a very harsh word. And so we all need exfoliation. But again, things that are exfoliating the skin uh, harshly are only going to compound that. And so I, I would like to say that that person could start with our facial essential system. We do have a discovery kit. It's a three-step system AMPM concept. We give it to every first-time facial client that is here at the Novitas Spa uh, Medical Rejuvenation Clinic. And uh, 
it, it, it is why our products uh, sell so well because the individual tries the whole system and the system t it t that system takes the guesswork out for the esthetician because you're the hero you're giving it to that you're prescribing that for the client so i would start with that and then just you know deep hydration um, facials um, also i'm a huge fan huge fan of led light um, we use the Revitalite product here at Novitas Spa. They were the very first, and I'm sure you remember that company, Melissa. Um, and um, there's nothing better from cellular regeneration uh, as LED light. It gets into that mitochondria, the dermis, and helps, you know, collagen elastin development. It helps with rosacea. It helps with, I mean, I on my web, the Novitas Spa website, um, there is a story about a gal who had uh, facial waxing two days, three, I guess, before her wedding and had a second degree burn. And that LED light and, the, and our product air supply saved her wedding. And I think, wh where is that, Elizabeth? Uh, that, uh, here comes the bride. Is that on, in, uh, I think, but it's on the website under, I think, um, news media or oh, something. Wait, uh, yeah, I think it's under the news media. Um, it, some, it's some section in the website, but the-, the blog. And it's in the blog, yes, for sure. So bottom line though, it is, and it might be on Wedding on the Square too, at that as well. But it, but it's uh, the story of Kristen, who this gal was, is, um, and it saved, it really did. She would, you know, it was getting crusty and it turned it from that scabbing to good skin where her makeup artist could do her wedding uh, makeup and photographs. So I'm a huge fan of LED light. So meaning that um, home care products that work and, and maximize the effect, it's like brushing and flossing your teeth. And then LED light is always a tool, always a tool. Yes, I do love LED therapy myself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, okay, one more question, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, who was your mentor early on? Because I know you were in the aesthetics industry before the aesthetics industry was act technically formed. So who was your mentor getting started into aesthetics? No one. Just me. Meaning, and I, I don't mean that glibly. What I'm saying is that I didn't have any one person because there was no person. Do you know? Um, because um, I forget the lady's name that started Redken, um, but I can see her. But yet when I uh, was working with my family's business and then Alcon, um, no longer. So it was way before me. So I didn't, I forget her name, should know her name. But, um, but you get my point. There was no one really working, you know, and I would say though, to be very frank with you, to answer your question, it was that working in Bloomingdale's in the cosmetic structure with Biba, and then fast forward, putting that nail towel together and seeing the nail industry burgeon from nothing. You follow? Meaning there was no such thing as the nail industry. And, um, and it took those companies such as Creative Nail and OPI, which all started from the dental industry uh, but I, as a marketer, and really that is my brain. So it was my experience at Bloomingdale's, then working in national sales and marketing, and also my interest for me. So for instance, the other thing I would say to you, and it has nothing to do with our industry, but as a young woman working in Lord and & Taylor, and, and I actually was introduced to Estee Lauder. Now I didn't work in the cosmetic department, but I was in some meetings because I was working in the buying office of a designer sportswear and I was just mesmerized by her, you know, her gift with purchase, her, you know, marketing of that. So I've approached all of this from a uh, marketing brain versus a uh, person uh, motivating me or inspiring me like one person. Do you know what I'm saying? And uh, now post starting Glycolique, I've met many, many people that were very unique and very talented business people and marketing people in the aesthetic market. But that was the beginning of me, my, as I say, my, you know, uh, DNA. Yeah. 
So you struggled through it for all the decades and now you're wanting to reach out and help and be that mentor yes. for estheticians upcoming and new into the industry. And also those have been in the industry for years and just need that extra motivation to be able to get them Push. to step on that next step and take that next step. Exactly. To evolve and take that next step. Absolutely. That is Absolutely. my heart's desire for the next 20 years of my life. Yes, absolutely. Well, we definitely like the people who pay it forward because without you, there would not be an aesthetic industry to begin with. So we absolutely thank appreciate the, the people you. with the passion and in industries like you. So thank you for that. And thank you for your time today, Megan. And thank you for everybody who's joined us. We do have a couple of questions that we weren't able to get to, Megan. So I'm going to send you that Q&A report when we're done with this. So if you've asked a question and you haven't gotten a response, Great. then rest assured somebody from the Novita Spa um, clinical products will reach out to you and respond. That way everybody's questions are being answered. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us. And today, I just want to answer... I I do want to say, Melissa, I do want to say, if you were unable to put your name and information into the website, um, we're working on that as, of, as we speak. So don't stop. Try again. Don't stop. Okay? All right. Thank you so much. Thank Everybody you. have a good afternoon. We will see you in a couple of weeks for our next webinar. Thank you, everyone.